Now, the weightlifter, Laurel Hubbard, will become the first transgender athlete to compete at the Olympics. She has been selected by New Zealand for the Tokyo Games. The New Zealand Olympic Committee says Hubbard will participate in the women's super heavyweight category as it is acknowledged that she and four other weightlifters uh, have been picked by uh, the New Zealand Olympic uh, Committee. Well, Donald O'Shea is a consultant endocrinologist who works with people who are transitioning. Uh, Donald, you're very welcome to the show, as always. Uh, As you'd imagine, this this will kick off something of of a debate about transgender athletes, won't it? Yeah, and it is a debate that kind of comes into focus, you know, coming up to every Olympics and and every kind of Rugby World Cup over the last kind of 12 years now, I would have been asked about this. And it's it's really very positive to see, uh, I suppose, the nature of the debate now. So, uh, you know, what we want as a society that will uh, allow people who are transgender to transition uh, personally, socially, uh, and they they should have no limit to their ambition. Uh, so a, a transgender athlete being selected to go to the Olympics uh, is an incredibly positive thing. It wasn't happening. Uh, it wasn't even been entertained uh, 12, 13, 14 years ago when I was first been asked about it. Um, so that's the positive side of it. There's always going to be the discussion then about is there competitive advantage? Um, so if you are transitioning mm. from... Uh, you know, if you're a trans woman and you're taking oestrogen, uh, that's going to weaken your muscles compared to a natal male who's on testosterone. Uh, but you will still have the physical size uh, from, you know, your, 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 the, the size of your body doesn't change when you transition. Yeah. So the governing bodies have to decide on uh, where their views are in terms of competitive advantage. Uh, But the fact that the debate has moved on so that we're discussing a transgender athlete uh, representing their country and being very welcomed and supported by all the athletes, um, you know, on her Olympic team. Yeah, that's a massive change in the last um, 10 years. And it's very positive. Uh, And when you talk about, you know, that governing bodies are going to have to deal with this. I mean, deal with it on a case-by-case basis or or do you imagine we'll have kind of bespoke rules regarding, I I suppose, maybe like the the particular uh, maybe category that Laurel Hubbard will compete in in weightlifting, for example? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the, you know, there is, there's a kind of, there's international human rights yeah. Um, that come into it. Uh, there is International Olympic Committee rulings. Uh, so there are uh, kind of you know general principles uh, that would uh, support uh, transgender individuals being able to uh, you know not have a limit on their ambitions, personally, sportingly, professionally. And uh, but then there will uh, you know have to be debate around. So the first time I was asked the que- this this question was the Women's Rugby World Cup, mm. and there were you know, it was about 2007 I think, uh, and two Eastern European athletes had transitioned uh, and were representing their country in the in the Women's World Cup. And, and, you know, in terms of height advantage um, in, in, in a line out, uh, that was clear. Yeah. Um, and, and the governing bodies have to make a decision on, on you know, where that plays out. Uh, but what is overwhelmingly positive is the fact that you now are seeing a New Zealand athlete representing her country with the support of uh, the athletics community. Uh, and, and that's as I say, a big change and shows, I think, that society is beginning to discuss this. Uh, the media would love it uh, to become a black and white, uh, you know, uh, confrontational Well, issue, I, so I do feel a little sorry for, for, for Laurel Hubbard because, like, inevitably you can just get this scene, you can see this getting just dragged down the sinkhole or the black hole, maybe I should call it, of the culture wars. Yeah, and 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 it's really important that it doesn't do that. I mean, she she's overcome injury. She's gone on a, a you know a, a massive 
personal journey supported by her family, I would imagine, because uh, to be an elite athlete and, and to go on this journey, you would need huge support from your family and you would need huge support from your friends. And it's really important that this doesn't uh, be, become an issue uh, to polarise people into, uh, you know, for and against, because just like the whole gender area, gender is not black and white, it's a spectrum. And uh, you, you've got to uh, allow the discussion. Yeah. And, and you've got to remember, elite athletes and Olympians represent less than 0 0.01 of our population. Uh, so you are talking about, you know, highlighting a really minor issue. And it's important that it informs the broader debate, not a discussion about um, right and wrong. And as yeah. you say, going down a, a, uh, yeah. a very and, negative discussion. And look, there, there is an awful lot of guff talked in, in, in this area about, you know, people transitioning just for commercial gain, kind of, a, you know, at, at scale that this would happen. <laughs> at, at the same time, you know, you, you say that you know, gender is a spectrum and, and most people will accept that reality now. But then in sport, it's the difficulty, isn't it? When when sport divides people uh, kind of on the binary choice of you know man or woman, isn't it? Oh, well, look, absolutely. I mean, I, I remember, you know, Sonia O'Sullivan uh, losing out to uh, three Chinese athletes. Uh, and I remember the anger and the upset that I felt, you know, she... Uh, because, uh, you know, she was done out of the medal by people who had a, an unfair competitive advantage. And, and uh, so people, you know, that, that's an element of the debate uh, that the governing bodies have to be responsible for of the individual sports. Um, and uh, but, but to say that people would consider transitioning for commercial or sporting yeah. gain, you know, I'm 25 years dealing <laughs> with people who are transgender and, you know, it is a journey none of them would like to uh, have undertaken. They, you know, yeah. they just wished uh, that they, they didn't have to go down the, what is a very difficult and challenging, challenging journey. So to, to go through that journey and show that you can still be uh, an elite and competitive athlete and an Olympian uh, is an incredibly positive uh, yeah. step for well, the, the transgender community.